First off, I'm just going to tap the icon to start it. And then you'll see there are two buttons. There's a set unlock code and a set master password. Now on the phone, there are two levels of security. Uh, you need to set the unlock code and that just gets you into the application. And for each individual item, you can specify whether or not you want to use the master password or not. So if it's something that uh, you're not really that bothered about, if it's something that isn't that secure, such as your dig login or something like that, you can just use the unlock code to get into the application. If it's something that's a bit more secure, such as your banking details or something, you might want to use, in fact, you will want to use the master password, but we'll see how that works as we go through. So let me first just set the unlock code, simple four digit code, and then I'll set the master password as well. Right, so I've used very insecure entries there. I just used one, two, three, four for the unlock code and just the word password for the master password. Obviously, you'll want to use something a lot more secure, use a phrase or something similar, and just take the first letter off each uh, word within the phrase. And if you look along the bottom, there are four different entries, uh, logins, notes, sync, and settings. So we could at this point, if we wanted to, uh, just add a new login and enter the details directly on the phone itself. So if we just tap on the plus button, you see we get a whole load of fields to fill in, username and password and a few other bits and pieces. And also down at the bottom, you get a, an entry which is master password protection, uh, which toggles on and off. And this is the mechanism that you use for each entry, whether or not you want it to be protected by the master password or just the unlock code. So currently by default, it's off. But uh, let's not enter a complete new record from scratch. Let's go ahead and sync with the uh, Mac, which is where the real power of this comes in. It will sync all your password data from one password on the Mac across to the iPhone. So uh, let's go back to, well, in fact, let's go now to sync. And as you can see, I've uh, been playing about with this both on the MacBook Air and also the Mac Pro. Now the MacBook Air is the machine I'm doing the screen capture on at the moment. So we're gonna sync with the MacBook Air. Uh, to sync, all I need to do is just tap the uh, computer. And you'll see that the status is unauthorized and the last full sync is never, so we haven't actually synced with this particular machine as yet. Now there is a handshake that needs to be done between both your iPhone and also the Mac that you're going to sync with. Let's just uh, tap on Request Sync. And you see that gives us a code 96001. And over here on the Mac we get a new sync request, so I just need to enter those uh, numbers onto the Mac. And then we'll say Accept on the Mac. Now that takes a few seconds to uh, to go through to the phone. If you just click on the icon, we should see. Now there's our new entry within the sync to iPhone dialog box. And over on the phone, we now have an authorized message. Uh, it still hasn't done a sync yet, so we need to do that as the final step. So I'll just tap the sync button. And there we can see last full sync just now. Uh, if you notice on the dialog box on sync to iPhone, it shows there are 11 items in there. So uh, that's our sync successful. Now over on the phone, if we go to the login section, we should see a list of all the logins available to us. Uh, let me just uh, tap back to the login section. And there we go, there's our sectioned list of uh, all the different logins that are now available. So you can see at the top, you can sort either by title or by domain. And also, if we just sweep down, see we have a search box as well. Now, this is on the current 1.2 release, so it's not available on the current version, or at least the version that's currently at the iTunes store, uh, unless 1.2 has now been made available. Now, this isn't a particularly long list, but if I wanted to find my Gmail entry, I just tap in the search bar and then just type in GM, and there we go, it's found our Gmail account straight away. Now, to access the details of this particular account, all I need to do is just tap on the account, and that gives us the URL of the website plus the username and password. 
Now, the way to actually access the website is just to click on this URL, or rather to tap on the URL. Now, it won't auto-submit the details, so you'll still have to tap the login button. Uh, this is still a version one release, but uh, let's give it a go. Let's just tap the URL and go across to the Gmail website. Okay, so that's taken us to Gmail, populated the username and password. So all we need to do now is just tap sign in, and we should be in. And there we go. Now, the iPhone app uses um, a separate browser. It doesn't use the mobile Safari browser, although it is built on the mobile Safari browser. Uh, what the developers have had to do for, for all applications that use web access is to build sort of like a mini browser within the application itself. So you can see down the bottom, we've got some, uh, some standard uh, browser controls, left and right arrow, um, um, a refresh button, and then this small key symbol, which gives us a list of all the open windows. To get back to our login screen, though, all we need to do is just hit the close button. And then back to logins. So let's just exit from the application by pressing the home button, and then we'll just tap it again to go back in. Right, first time we go in, we need to enter the unlock code. Okay, and you can see, we can still see all the details within our login screen. But if I now tap one of the entries, let's try, uh, well, let's try the Gmail account entry again. You'll see that it doesn't actually give me the details straight away. It's protected by the master password. Um, and again, that's configurable by that slider switch at the bottom of each entry when you go into edit mode. But uh, let's just type in this password. And there we go, that gives us access to the URL and the login details. And we'll just tap on the URL and it'll take us back in. Okay, so we'll close that down and we'll have a quick look at the settings option. Right, within settings, you can change the unlock code and you can also configure when you want the unlock code to trigger. So I've got it currently set to on sleep. You can also change the master password and again set the auto lock. So currently five minutes and uh, you'll need to put the password in again. Now once you've entered the password um, you can still get into all the other information. Um, it's just after five minutes you'd need to enter the password again. You don't have to enter the password every time you access something that is protected by the uh, master password protection. Oh, Before I do forget though also it does sync secure notes as well. We haven't looked at notes um, to access your secure notes, all you need to do is just type the notes button. And there you go. I've just got a single test note. Right. I've actually left it five minutes while I've been uh, preparing something else. So I just need to enter the password again. And there we go. There's the entry. Now, if I wanted to switch off the master password protection, I just slide the slider. And there we go. Next time we go in, I won't be prompted for the master password. Now, bear in mind, this is very much a version one product. Uh, if you want to have a play, it's uh, worth downloading version 1.0. Uh, what you can do as well, if you want to have a play and then uh, you have a few problems and you want to go back, you can just delete the application. I want you to delete the application on the iPhone uh, and from within iTunes, it will actually delete the sort of synced history so you can resync it again. Uh, you might need to have a little play with that as well, especially if you forget to empty the trash in the earlier version you end up with a lot of uh, trash entries on your iPhone. But if you delete the application, it deletes the data that's been synced with the iPhone. So you can just go in and uh, resync it again and get a fresh, uh, fresh new set of data from your desktop application. <laughs>